from the Getty's Bike Tour Studio. All the DJs say, this one's on its way. You're listening to From Studio 1A, Addressing Gettysburg. The popular podcast Addressing Gettysburg. To Addressing Gettysburg today. Hey, Ronnie. Hi, good afternoon, I should say. Yeah, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. How about yourself? Good. It's Friday. It is Friday. Thank God. <laughs> I'm ready to... Uh, what are you going to do this weekend? Anything interesting? Yeah. So, Mom and I are actually going on a tour with Kendra DeBaney and Licensed Battlefield. I am glad you brought Paul that Bailey. up. Yeah, it's a... I saw Kendra today. Oh, neat. Uh, and uh, I said, uh, Kendra, oh, we were just talking about you the other day because you have your tour coming up. And I was going to say, you should come on our Friday show. Now, you have to understand, I thought today was Thursday. <laughs> I okay, heard, yeah. I texted you that in the morning, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, <laughs> so I, I said, when, when is your tour? And she said, tomorrow. And I go, oh, that's when yeah. we're doing the show. <laughs> Not realizing today is Friday, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and then right. it dawned on me later, and I sent her an email. I said, if you, if you can, you know. You know, call in or something and let it, but you're already going so great. Tell people about it because I wanted to promote it for her. Well, unfortunately, for those that don't have tickets, it's sold out. It's oh, been sold okay, out good. for months, I think. Um, it's oh, one well of the then, special. No, I don't care that she's not on the show. <laughs> it's one of the special encounters with history. Um, like, they were doing the monthly different topics um, there for a while through the Gettysburg Foundation, and this one is on the farms of Tawny Town Road. Um, so, licensed battlefield guide Paul Bailey is also uh, doing it. I think it's like all day, 8 a.m. to 4, something like that. Um, it's a long day. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, so that's I, what I, you're doing. That's what we're doing. Yep. And Very then nice. Sunday I'll be at For the Historian. Working so. at For the... Oh, damn. I should. I forgot to load the video. <laughs> oh, no. Well, next no week. I went in uh, <laughs> For the Historian. Eric, uh, I went in and I saw uh, Veronica working there on her first day last week. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Did you take a picture I, of I took her? a video. <laughs> he like came around the corner. I was trying to help some person <laughs> with books that I have no idea. It's like some kind of Wars of Atlantis or something. I have no the idea Wars what this guy is looking for. Yeah, it's like this Osprey publishing thing that I have no concept. I have no clue it even is a thing. And I come around the corner and Matt's like, oh, hey, with like a video camera. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a child on, on its first day of school, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I a Mom's like. Box. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Kathy, oh, made right. some <laughs> Kathy made me some peanut butter sandwiches. No yeah. jelly. Don't no. Jelly. Oh, just peanut butter? Just peanut butter. You have a jelly allergy. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> no, what's no. wrong with you? <laughs> just don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was, uh, it was fun to watch you anyway. It was a good... Uh, I'm loving it. I, there are really some interesting people that come in. Um, and yeah, it's yeah. really neat. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, Mike Lentz is dropping things. <laughs> Jesus, God. If you hear any loud bangs or crashes in the background, Mike Lentz is here. It's so. just Mike killing my phone. It's fine. <laughs> I don't need it. What did he do? He dropped my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, uh, so we're getting notifications that it's frozen again, but you know what, folks? Oh, yeah, uh, no, because it's, yeah. Because Mike dropped the phone. (laughs) We're dropping, like, all of the frames right now. Well, um, but can you hear it? As long as the sound isn't breaking up, I don't care if the picture, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to be looking at my face, right? Let's be honest, Veronica, you're a woman. Would you want to look at my face? (laughs) You have to. You always look up at the ceiling, though, when you're looking at me. That's the sign that I'm lying, right? Yes. Isn't that, isn't that a sign? <laughs> <laughs> kind of Depends on which side. I think it's which oh, side, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you bitches up for food? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You're did you jerk. hear that? Did you hear what you said there? That wasn't me. You bitches up for food? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that like that last me. week? No. Last, uh, <laughs> it was. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the show last week. We're going to put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you bitches up for food? <laughs> At the end of the show last week, Veronica, the uh, we were, funny. you know, the show was over. <laughs> yeah. So in fairness to you, this is, this was private conversation. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. See, you've been warned, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and we we were all sitting around and uh, talking. We we're saying goodbye to our guest Rebecca and everything like that. And then as soon as she walks out the door, there's like a second of silence. And then you say, "You bitches up for food?" <laughs> and we're like, "Yeah, bitch." And then we start. We start, <laughs> then I I realize, oh wait a second, that's a good drop. And then I look and I hadn't stopped recording yet, and your mic was open. And then we all cheered, and it was great. Everybody was happy. So there there we go, ladies I and gentlemen, a new one for the board. You bitches oh, up for food? Figured out our problem. <laughs> what was the problem? We're connected to your phone for some reason. Oh, don't connect to my phone. Well, clearly that's an issue. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, anyway, so there might be a little. Well, that was that going to stop the video then? Uh, it's basically stopping Sorry. the video. We're driving ninety six point seven. But that means it's stopping the, the streams. I have no idea. I'm not watching it. As long as we record, it doesn't matter. It's, well, we, we can, are recording. Yeah, so that's fine. Okay, so what have we got to do today, ladies and gentlemen? boys and girls, children of all ages, old people of all ages. Uh, we mentioned Kendra's tour. Uh, free t oh, three tickets are available for an evening with the painting. Uh, someone had a family issue and they're they're not going to be able to come up. They're, wow. they're down in Florida. Um, so she said, uh, you know, I've got three tickets available if somebody wants to buy them. So she's got three tickets to paradise. Three tickets to paradise. That's right. <laughs> Pack your bags. We'll leave tonight. It's very 21st Plus. century. Having a third... <laughs> A third person involved. <laughs> hey, I do what I can. We're a thruple. <laughs> a power thruple. We are nothing if not inclusive on this Man, show. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We include anyone. Hey, Mike. Three of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Mike. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you are interested in uh, buying uh, one of these or all three of these tickets, email me, matt at addressinggettysburg.com, and I'll put you in touch with the seller, and we'll figure it all out and all that jazz. Three tickets so far are available. Um, there might be more because you know people. We we put this. When did we put this out? Was it's it July or yeah, something? It's been a while. August, July, or August? No, over the it's summer. Been a while, yeah. It was a while ago, and yeah. people's plans change. Right. So it's obviously yes. How about this though? I know that's a specialty tour for our group, but um, the foundation has a December. I think it's like December 11th. Don't quote me on the day. For another one, just open to the public. <laughs> for God's sake, <laughs> ghosts. <laughs> Well, guys, I'm going home. That's it for me for today. That was you? That was me this time. No, I dropped my phone. It wasn't like oh. me. Like, it wasn't my body that fell. It was just my phone. Was it somebody no, I just heard a noise and I, okay, this is going to be great audio yeah. wise. People oh, are going to be like, what am I doing awesome. with my life listening to this? Uh, okay, go ahead. So, so anyway, what the point I was making is the December tour that's open to the public through the Gettysburg Foundation. And it's already sold painting. out, right? Yes, I mean, it, of these course. are so popular. They're so um, well attended. I think Well, Sue know. Borman does a great job with yeah. them. Yeah. And um, and and it is just interesting. It's a 360 degree painting. So why wouldn't you want to learn more about it? Because it's just a it's a curiosity, you know. Sure. Um, but of course, ours sold out very quickly because well, we're involved. Yeah, I mean, well, it's obviously I mean, let's you. be honest. It's me. Well, it's more Eric than me. That I believe. People want to meet Eric. Nobody even knows what I <laughs> look like. People want to. Uh, people. People want to pet his beard. <laughs> I, I did legitimately have somebody ask me what my beard products were the other night. We do, I what, did a live stream in the in the forum. Yeah, yeah. And they were like. What kind of beard products do you use? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, beard products. Huh. And what do what do you use? <laughs> beard products. Well, I uh, there's like this coconut oil shampoo oh, and conditioner. Wow. Okay. I don't have anything in today because I was running late, so it's like kind of wiry and dry, but it, it's gross. So it's a but, you, uh, you condition you put any oil in or cream? I do. I have uh, it's it's beard butter. Beard butter. Yeah. I think yeah, I have that lovely. one. Yeah. What's the brand? I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know I get it from Giant, and I know what it looks like on the shelf, so that's the one that I get. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it works. Yeah. It's an epidural. <laughs> oh, okay. It's an epidural. What? No. I don't know. That's what you said. So, um, well, that's the uh, people are fans of his beard. In fact, um, I think someone said that they wanted to make a Facebook page to his beard. <laughs> oh, Eric's that's fine. beard. Yeah. yeah. And then that's just get fine. different pictures of you. And we'll then... put that on a t-shirt. Just my beard. <laughs> It's not a bad idea. We got a lot of t-shirt ideas it's, that we got to start doing. It's the beard of the Pennsylvania Reserves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I want the damn internet to work. Yeah, I, I don't do. blame you. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's that. Three tickets available. If you want one or three of them, 
contact me, Matt, at addressinggettysburg.com. Do it quickly because people will uh, jump on that, of course. Next week, we are off. We will not be doing a live show next week. Veronica, is what are you going to? Some kind of seminar or something? It's the uh, Center for Civil War Photography's hmm. Seminars Annual something. I don't Look know. Look at you. It got I postponed love, from last year. So. I love how... Um, into this stuff you've gotten, yeah, right? Because yeah. you weren't always into this. Veronica well, no, does more of this stuff the, um, than we do. Yeah, no, she does. <laughs> I know. I was into the civilian stuff more. That, like that's that's why I actually started coming here. It was more like the town and civilian stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean the Civil War photography. I guess that's a little bit more military, army, carnage based stuff. Um, but still, but you, I mean, like you're getting the, the, you know the farms on Tawny Town Road. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of like personal like histories and things like that it's not right. going to be military strategy and things like that i can't imagine so yeah i mean hmm. but That's yeah interesting. it's, it's uh, th <laughs> thursday evening we start down in emmitsburg of all places and then pretty excited about this i think that evening there's a little meet and greet with bill frasanito is going to come out oh uh, so very nice yep. yep very nice and then it's friday saturday and we end up on uh sunday afternoon well, good. Have fun with that. And um, so that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you can't be entertained next Friday is because Veronica <laughs> has to go do a tour, a two day tour, apparently. Yeah. Can't, it was you, can't a even year do a ago. Thursday In fairness, show. It was booked a year oh, OK. Ago. <laughs> well, you weren't on the show yet. OK, yeah. so fair enough. Though. Fair enough. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen. If you look in the small print of my contract, actually, it's. <laughs> I think it's right down there. Yeah, actually. <laughs> the whole contract, we have a contract. small print. And it's on a postcard. Yeah. It's on a TR historical postcard. <laughs> Sounds about right, actually. Yeah. No, wait. Actually, I drew it up here on a post-it note. <laughs> there it is. Mine was done on government toilet paper, so at least yours is a step in the right direction. I know. We actually signed it in one of the stalls in the uh, men's room down here. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Enough with this goofiness. This is terrible. Uh, today's guest, ladies and gentlemen, there you are, ladies and gentlemen, is someone that you, no, not you, Mike, the camera here, uh, is someone that you may have heard of before. If you're a patron of ours, uh, you have heard him on Patreon uh, once talking about his book, The War for the Common Soldier. And um, his name is Dr. Peter Carmichael. Uh, today he's going to talk about, well, I'm going to keep it a surprise. We're going to keep it a Suspense. surprise until the next segment. Suspense. And that's when we're going to find out what we're going to talk about with Pete. But he's, he's our guest today. I mean, the amount, of, the amount of my people call your people that we've had to go through to get... No, it was actually very easy. <laughs> it was very easy to, uh, to do this. And uh, yeah, that's it. So why don't we um, take a uh, break right now. And when we come back, we will have uh, Dr. Carmichael in the chair. And we'll see where the hell this leads. Uh, the pre-show is interesting, so we'll see. We'll be right back. Want to be on the show? Send an email to info at addressinggettysburg.com. Be sure to include the reason why you think you'd make a good guest when you write us. The Giants marching home again. Hurrah, hurrah. We'll give them a hearty welcome then. Hurrah.
we're back with Cam's Idol. Uh uh-uh, uh, that was years ago. Here's Matt. <laughs> Okay, we are we are back with our guest, uh, Dr. Peter Carmichael. Uh, welcome to the show, Pete. <laughs> um, okay, so to, what 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 is the big thing that's coming up in a couple of weeks that we're here to talk about, among other things? Yes, we'll talk about many things. Uh, October eighth, ninth, and tenth. We are sponsoring a, con- a conference, North Carolina Gettysburg. Okay. And the Civil War Institute is sponsoring the conference. I, say I should at, say at that. Gettysburg yeah. College. So Civil War Institute is part of Gettysburg College. We mm-hmm. are not a separate entity. And we begin on the 8th at the Majestic Theater with Jack and Brownie of Appalachia State. He's published a few books on the war, including a really good book on the environment in the Civil War. This is one of our favorite books. And he's going to come and speak to you, or he already has? Yeah, no, uh, he's going to come on the show. We were just talking about this, Eric. We're going to have to figure out what to do here, because he's coming on Friday. And we were just talking about making it a Thursday show because of your wedding. That sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. <laughs> yeah. So we're not going to do a Thursday show that week, and we'll have to get uh, someone else to run uh, your... I'm telling you, Jekin's voice is made for radio. Great southern draw. I know. But uh, he is a tall man, a mm-hmm. big man, and I'm sitting on a chair that is rather, I'd say, uh, questionable. <laughs> so you might want to get something uh, before he arrives. I think but, by uh, then I'm going to get new stools. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, because it's idea. becoming a liability. Yeah. Uh, so on, so Jekin's going to speak about North Carolina and the war in general, again, yeah. at the Majestic. Right. And then on Saturday, he will join us and us being uh, Scott Hartwig, former chief of interpretation mm-hmm. here at uh, Gettysburg. Ashley Lusky, uh, she's a long time at Richmond National Park, and she did her graduate work at uh, West Virginia, and she's at CWI. She gives one of the best tours I've ever been on, on Iverson's Brigade. Hmm. So she's going to carry hmm. that. Um, and then we're going to do in the afternoon, uh, Cemetery Hill. We'll look at Avery's Assault. Scott Hartwig will step up. And then at the end of the day, we'll be at Lower Culp's Hill. We'll look at Johnson's attack. I'll be supervising during the entire thing. I'm quality control. That's yes, what I okay, do. Yeah. there you go. Because as you know, Scott Hartwig is pretty unreliable. So, Scott, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> keep him honest. Let the academic step in here. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Scott, you're missing the cultural orientation of the battle right now. Please let me, because that's what everyone's dying to hear. Right, of course. Uh, that's right. <laughs> And then on Sunday, we are going to go to the North Carolina Monument, and uh, we have Carol Reardon with us, yeah. uh, and I believe Chris Gwynn, and I might be missing somebody. So that'll be Sunday morning. So we have uh, some openings still left, and uh, all you have well, to do unfortunately, is I have to be at Eric's wedding, so I, don't can't, have I can't to be. speak. You don't have to be. Do you I'm his my, best man. Do you know what my daughters say? <laughs> my daughters say, when you have to do something, and my daughters say, it's not Russia. <laughs> wait, what, <laughs> now, hey, wait, what movie is that from? Come on, y'all it's can do it. It's not Russia. Not Russia. Oh God! What movie is I'm that? Not a movie person. Give me, a, give me a genre, like an era. The Hunt for Red October. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a comedy, 1980s, and it is real Chevy, genius. Chevy, oh, no, Chevy oh, Chase. spies like us. No, yes, Ch- no, 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 no. Chevy Chase, Bill Murray. Yep, oh, Caddyshack. 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 Oh, yeah. I don't remember that line from Caddyshack. It's not Russia. It's not Russia. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> so uh, that's my point. So <laughs> you right. can come. All right, you Eric, can sorry, I won't be there. I'm going to this. <laughs> that's fine. I already got your gift anyways. <laughs> <laughs> now I can save on the I was going to bring more, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I can save on the food. <laughs> Damn right you can. Hey, well, speaking of food and uh, Panera. That's what we were oh, serving no. for. So Who doesn't love Panera? The Panera cookies. What's your favorite? Uh, cookie? But, uh, it has to be the cookie. I, well, you don't I, get the apple cookies. Katie's cookies. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Actually, the yeah. best cookies in the world are his uh, right. future wife. Oh, 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 better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And normally, <laughs> he brings a box for the guest. But, well, uh, you know, I, I figured it was know. just Pete Carmichael. Oh. That's oh. right. why cause a fuss. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is the last time he'll ever come on. So, wait, wait, wait. I want to go back. Yeah, please. Panera, you make your order. Please. You're not the guy that gets the apple, right? Because you get apple, chips. At or, Panera? Yeah. Or do I look like the guy cookie. that orders an I'm, apple at Panera? I'm giving you an opportunity to come clean. I bet you do get the apple. I do not. You get the apple and then you ask the person who got the cookie, hey, can I believe your cookie, right? <laughs> I'll trade with you. <laughs> no, no, you eat your apple and then uh-huh. you eat your cookie. And then I take the cookie because I can't get enough sugar. Yeah. Right. No, I don't get the apple because uh, they always have the red apple or yellow apples. and oh, They never have the Granny Smiths. Apples. I like yeah. Granny Smiths. That's the only apple I really like. That's and they don't have them. He is He's weird. weird. That is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that weird? I like I like a sour apple. That is weird. Yeah, apples well, are sweet. That's yeah, the I don't joy like of them. an apple. But you they're like mealy. Things. 
I like the meat of the Granny Smith. Mealy? Mealy. Yeah. Like Wait. with worms? <laughs> no, no, just, you know, mealy. Just there's too air, too airy in there, you know? Uh... What are you talking? I'm talking about <laughs> right. Macintosh and, and Red Delicious right. and all the other ones. Can we look up Mealy right now? Because I truly don't know what it means. Me- you, really? Yeah, well, we not really. It's kind of yucky. Is Mealy yucky? No, yeah. Mealy I mean, is like context? a consistency. How do you spell A it? yucky consistency. <laughs> See, that's the problem. You're going to get Pete is Mealy. It, is it, is it you Mealy? Should, yeah, you mealy. should never <laughs> use words you can't spell. Mealy. Uh, here, here. There it is. Um... Hmm. <laughs> okay, maybe mealy wasn't the right word. <laughs> uh, here, me- but what is mealy texture? Here we go. Uh, definitions of mealy: composed of or covered with particles resembling meal or texture of consistency. Uh, it is left mealy residue. Okay, so mealy wasn't exactly yeah, the right word fine. for that. Yeah, right. But airy, uh, like you know, not. It just doesn't feel solid to me. So I, I, you know, I've not been around you all there much, but I'm curious. I'm sure that uh, you drink wine from time to time. I sure. would love to hear your description, the vocabulary you employ <laughs> with wine, right? Charcoal mellowed. Right, right. Do you remember on, on The Office what uh, Michael Scott said when he was drinking the wine? He said, it tastes some oaky afterbirth. afterbirth. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, after birth. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jim just looks at the camera and goes, like, what? <laughs> Let's hear that again. Uh, oh my God. Oh God. So we should get back to that weekend. Like, <laughs> why bother? You know, why bother? Exactly. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it's exactly. It's fun. Do you do this on the tours? Like while Judkins up there talking about North Carolina or something? I, you Are you know, like I, no, I injecting get, jokes? I, no, I get in the back, right? And uh, so I'm not so distracted. Okay. Distracted to folks as well. But you know what? It's going to be a great day because we'll be out in the field. We all know how special it is uh, to do that and with people who know what the hell they're talking about Scott Hartwig and Reardon and Ashley yeah. Lusky I mean I can't say enough good things it's kind of like them. an all star cast <laughs> I guess that's, yeah. that's, 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 yeah, I mean, it that's is. Honest, and there's so many people around here who know so much about this place and yeah. I, it's in all seriousness it's a joy to learn from them I've been a sponge and uh, I know we've all seen from time to time people get a little territorial and they say you know I'm the expert about you know company A of the 26th North Carolina on Willoughby Run I'll give them that but I'd like to believe that there's you know People that know a lot about that and other things as well. Sure. So it's cool. You know, yeah. it's, uh, CWI is um, in the 11 years that I've been here. I think we've made important connections with the licensed battlefield guides, with the park here. And uh, most man, importantly, with us. Well, you know, I was about ready to say that, but <laughs> we'll see how this goes. I, I, have to see how this goes for a I couldn't risk waiting for you to say it. I had to, because who knows? Remind you might not you, have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to have it. I slipped your mind. We're, we're going to all be together in the summer, right? Yeah, now the summer we're going to do so. You're so, come out in the summer. Yeah, originally we were going to try to cover this weekend sure. but someone had to get married yeah what the heck is yeah it? hey i'm so sorry <laughs> i am so sorry we apologize to pete you, yeah, i mean yeah. I, I lo- you know what i'm I, looking forward to your wedding I, I, I love weddings i'm not trying to get a late invite here you want to come <laughs> yeah no i'm tempted. actually i have a plus one uh, my my plus one bail so, uh, this is going to make make it or break it ready what kind of music what kind oh, of music? we have a dj oh okay that's better so it's, All right. it's whatever you want Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, I'm everybody intrigued. who got an invite, guys. That's true. I'm intrigued now. Hey, what's your, what's your song request and like three people well, send in song requests? How about this? I like Some of us didn't get invites. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't given you your actual <laughs> invite. <laughs> Here's the link for what we want. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you can come I, if you want. I will give it. We're not going to be on an I'll, date. I'll give you your invite at, at the ceremony. It'll be fine. You know, I have the song that they're going to dance to, their first dance. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're not a couple. <laughs> yeah, see how many more cookies you get. <laughs> Do you have a first dance? I think so. Pick that. Like, it's not you. Look, yours. man, there are so many don't have things a song? that I've been stressed about over the last month. That, like the first dance song is is way down at the bottom of the list. <laughs> I, what? I would have been stressing over that the whole time because that's that's going to uh, set the course for your whole marriage. Well, is it? and it, frankly, I think you should pick something different from this. Probably. Yeah. I mean, well, he is a Yankee Doodle Dandy, so maybe they could. Oh, like... oh my God. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. We're going to play John Philip Sousa. That's going to be it. Sousa would be good, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Or this. You know, <laughs> dearly beloved. <laughs> we are gathered here today. You know, Whalen's going to be the officiant, right? No, he isn't, is yes, he? Yes, he is. Wow. I, I thought.
thought you could be pretty like anybody. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much. If like, Wendland's gonna be. How did yeah. we get on the I don't know. I don't know. This is Pete's interview. interview. Oh, see, that's we're trying to convince <laughs> Pete, Pete to come. To the I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm tempted. Yeah, <laughs> listen, I'm telling you, I have a press one, uh, plus one. Uh, yeah, you can I'm, absolutely I'm, come and take because uh, I've already said that someone's coming, but they backed out. So, open bar. Of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you know, uh, it's uh, mostly beer and vodka. Who's, who's driving? I thought you were getting a hotel room. Yeah. Why are we yeah. talking about I don't about know. We'll talk stuff. about this later. Talk I'm sorry. Let's get thing. back to the Civil War Institute. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pete. I am so sorry. You, this was supposed to be, this is going to be a big Very break for you. ship we run here. I know. <laughs> All right. So back to the show. Back to or back the show, to the, yes. the, to the, to <laughs> the, <laughs> so what the hell is it? I can't think of the word now. Conference. Seminar? Conference. Program. Thank you. I want to say symposium. All kinds of symposium. It all works. Conference. Yes. Back to the conference. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So <laughs> this is all being done out on the battlefield? Well, so Friday night we'll be inside at the Majestic. At the Majestic. Right. But Saturday. Saturday. Saturday and Sunday is all day. And uh, we're meeting over where uh, Community College in the parking lot there. Okay. Oh, at Hack. Hack. At Hack. They were okay. meeting there. At and, and, and bus. From when to when? It's all day. Uh, nine o'clock to five. Nine to uh, five. Yeah, okay. Nine to five, and then on Sunday we won't have a bus, but we'll meet at the at the Carolina Monument. So you can make it to the reception, right? What time yeah, is the reception? What time is reception? Oh Christ! Oh my God! Seriously, five. Five. Not five. Not it's at five. It's at five. It's at five. So yeah, yeah. you get like fashionably late. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. No, right. That's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Come on, no. come on. It's at down at the battlefield uh, bed and breakfast. In fact, yeah. everybody, everybody watch. Come, yeah, come on. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. come on. Uh, now that we know exactly <laughs> when and where my wedding is, everybody just show the hell up. It's fine. I think this could be a good marketing opportunity for the conference. We are now have a free add-on after our day in the field. <laughs> it's an open bar. bar. It's an open <laughs> bar. Yeah. It's good. We, we have Thank just you, now Mary. sold out. We're sold out. Yeah. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to take the profits and we're going to start a scholarship and we're going to name it after you. Oh, there you go. There we go. There you go. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's yeah. nice. It's all about the kids. It we're is. It's all for, all for the children, <laughs> right. Eric. Right. Very nice of you, Eric. That's very kind. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Thank so much. Thank God Katie doesn't have Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I'm sure she'll hear about it somehow. Wedding's uh, canceled. Yeah, when random people start showing up. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, what are all these what, what are, are all these, these nerds doing here? I didn't invite these people. Yeah. I don't even know who the hell they are, so. We're here for the open bar. Okay. But I, I am curious. Are you going to be wearing Savoir garb? Or? Absolutely not. Okay, thank no. God. Because I wouldn't go. No. That would be it. That'd be a that's deal breaker deal for me. Breaker. Right? No. That's no. the thing that'll yeah. do it for yeah. you. That's, that's it. it. Right, okay. A lot of other things can happen, but no. Yeah. I, I have, like I have all of uh, yeah. the stuff, I, I, I but usually, I'm not putting it on. Well, what do you, I usually give a wedding and Savoir garb maybe, maybe three years. Maybe. <laughs> At most, yeah. Uh, I, what's your take on this? Well, no, I, okay. So, like that, I, it's the same thing with like people that dress as Trekkies for yes, you know, absolutely. It's the same idea, and I, I just wonder, like Veronica, tell me as a woman, that's fair. Now that I think about it, my first wedding, I got married in Class A's, and that only lasted like. But you were in the army. Well, yeah. See now, okay. I was gonna say the only time getting married in Civil War garb is okay is if you were in the Civil War. And it was during the Civil War, and you were in the military. Right. right. That's like, okay, yeah. that's cool. That's fine. But ah, yeah. I just don't get it. I don't get it. So I have a question. Okay. Where does somebody go to sign up for this? Oh. Oh, he's trying oh. to get it off of him and back to, to you. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. All right. I get it. All right. Where you does know what? That's a legit question. Good. Yeah, go ahead. And, right. and then so, we'll get back to stupidity. And then we'll get back to stupidity. <laughs> so all you need to do is type in Google Civil War Institute, come up on our homepage, and it says fall conference. And all you have to do is then sign up. The Civil War Institute Gettysburg, because there's other ones, right? Oh, you know what? Thank you. You're right. You're Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College. And we will come up, and then uh, you'll see the list of our, our programs. There's the fall conference. And we should note what we're going to be doing uh, in June, and that's yes. the CWI Summer Conference. That's our flagship event. Uh, second weekend of June, we have Gary Gallagher, Carrie Janey, um, Jeffrey Carrie Wirtz. Gallagher would not accept my invitation to come I on the know show. What? I, you know what? I, He's the I, keynote I'll, speaker for their uh, Remembrance Day this I know, year I for the Lincoln that. Fellowship. So I'll be talking wanna, to him. Yeah, I'll be, I'll I'll be talking to him. You know what? I'll, I'll <laughs> he work said on he would reconsider. You know what? I will, I'll work on him yeah. a little bit. That doesn't really mean anything, but <laughs> I'll try. I mean, I was one of his students. But, yeah. You know. Be like, hey, you know. He thinks that he's not Gettysburg enough. That's his defense. 
Well, he certainly has some insecurities like we all do. And I sure. think that he understands that there are people here who know this battle extraordinarily well. And so he's assuming that this program yeah, is going to be that. It's going to be in the weeks. We don't know he anything. He's it's, looking around the room like it's one of us. Right, that it's knows not. So much. We know nothing. <laughs> you know, we're, we're I was just. doing the poker face. Yeah. Was, uh -huh, oh, yeah. We're know a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I don't know shit. Okay. That's why I'm doing this. I'm trying to learn. <laughs> But so, you know, this second weekend in June, it's uh, Brooke Simpson's also going to be there mm -hmm. as well. So we have a, a really good lineup. And you know, the thing about the conference is that it really has something for everybody. We do military, social, cultural, civilian. We do a lot of battlefield tours. We leave Gettysburg as well. And of course, everyone gets to live out their dream. They get to stay in a college dorm. And who in the hell doesn't miss those wonderful mattresses? Oh, and wait, and the rubber little. The sheets they put on? Oh, uh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, lovely. Yeah, you don't No know. air conditioning? No, some do, some oh, don't. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. And, but you can, you don't have to stay in the dorms. So well, thank God I there. live right around the corner. And <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't have to do that. Well, you can just see the people who stay in the dorms and they just look absolutely haggard, right? After a <laughs> night of horrible sleep. Oh, sure. Right. But then they just, they liven up. And, you know, I, I uh, it's a really good atmosphere. It's, I would say, uh, jovial in a different way that we're jovial, but it's still, <laughs> right. you know, it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of nice people, and uh, it's a really good thing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to call and ask a question uh, to our guest, the number is, uh, what is the number? 717-420-1978. It's at the bottom of your screen there. Uh, okay, so... What I, I what are we what do you want us to do in the summer when we come out there? Because I'm going to clear out the whole weekend and we're going to do whatever we can do. Well, I think the first thing you should do is interview many of our yeah. uh, faculty members. I like that after idea. they've given their talks, and you can of course go in all kinds of directions with them. And I think you know they'll be eager to do that because let's be honest, everyone likes to talk about themselves, their work, and especially their books. So mm -hmm. you'll have I think a really interesting cast of characters characters to talk to. And I hope you'll go on the battlefield with us. Our major Gettysburg event is, I think you'll enjoy this because of your tiny town uh, tour this weekend. <laughs> our, our, uh, our tour is uh, from battlefield to field hospital. Follow Ooh. regiment. I'm doing with uh, Jen Murray. Many, have you heard yeah. Jen Murray on the show? Not yet. Oh my God, yeah, you gotta have her. She's great. Yeah, yeah she's wonderful. So we're gonna do the 18th uh, Virginia. Uh, it's Garnett's Brigade. So we'll do Pickett's Charge and then we'll go off to the field hospital and talk about the aftermath of the battle. Mm. Uh, someone's doing a regiment from Sims's Brigade to Barksdale's Brigade. we got two federal regiments as well. And so those are the kinds of things we'd like to do, meaning hit this experience from different angles. And uh, yeah, it's great. We also do something that is called uh, dine-in. So uh, the guest attendees, they can sign up uh, to have lunch with one of our faculty members who has a topic and maybe some documents and everyone has a little lunch and then they sit down and they have an intimate conversation with a faculty member. It's, you know, really important to capture a spirit, and in all honesty, sort of like what we're doing here, man, you want people to be relaxed and just to enjoy themselves, and at the same time, get that opportunity to talk to folks, people that they've read their books or they've seen them speak somewhere else, and uh, so there you have it. Yeah, yeah. we have go one ahead. question from the comments. Section. All right, go ahead. Um, do you think the CWI will ever have an online program for distance learning? Um, hmm. We have talked about that. Uh, since the day I've, I've, I've been here. I've been here for, sure. 10, for almost 11 years now. The problem is the upfront cost is extraordinarily high. And I think that... Well, yeah, because you have to buy like the software uh, and, and subscription to whatever service it is. That's on. right. And then you also have to have the faculty members that are going to be dealing with that, who, of course, my primary responsibility, which I absolutely enjoy, is working with my own students. So sure. you start to divert you know, what resources we have. It, it makes absolute sense that we should do it. Uh, it's just a real question of whether we could ever find the resources. Because at the end of the day, it's gotta be profitable yeah. uh, uh, as well. So I, I think we need to think more creatively. I'd like to see us do something that is kind of along those lines, a special one week, very intense examination of the battle. But before that examination would take place, that the attendees would sign up the previous academic year and there would be readings and there'd be discussion and they would do a their own research project so that when we then came together during the summer, uh, these people would already be ready to go. And uh, I think it would be elevated is not the word I'm looking for here, but it would be, I would say, a different kind of experience, a little bit maybe more, I hate, I'm gonna use this word on the air. I hate using Mealy. this Mealy. <laughs> Mealy. <laughs> Mealy. Mealy. My ex-wife used to use that word a lot. 
I, I think she was referring to me. I'm Mealy. I think she, that's what she meant. What's the opposite? Pete, you're Mealy. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a scholar. If you're an academic, that seems to fit, right? He's a Mealy academic. Yeah, yeah, that, that works. <laughs> mealy mouthed. <laughs> mealy mouthed. Yes. No, what was the word? You weren't going to really say Mealy. I was going to say scholarly. And okay. Just, you know, it's like ether coming out of my mouth. Everyone now who's been listening and watching, they just fall asleep. Yeah. Scholarly. <laughs> Folks, come and have a scholarly exploration into the battle. But it's a lot of fun because the people that uh, listen to this show, listen to all these podcasts and everything, uh, and you know, follow the Park Service's uh, YouTube page and all that, like they love this stuff. They they can't get enough of being out on the battlefield and having people such as the cast of characters you've uh, not characters the uh, the. <laughs> The all-star cast is what I meant to say that you've uh, <laughs> mentioned for both October and June. Um, I mean, that's like nerd heaven for a lot of people to, to hear these people who they've read or who they heard about or something and actually be on the battlefield with them and hear them talk about what happened on the battlefield. It's pretty good stuff. And let me tell you, um, Veronica, I think you were the first one of our little group to read an environmental oh, history yeah. of the yeah. Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. And you told me about it. And I had it because you got me on the uh, mailing list, the reviewer list. And so I said, okay, yeah, let me check. Because like, so I got it off my shelf. I started reading it, and it was great. And then we had Judkin and uh, Tim, Tim on yeah. uh, the show, I don't know how, a couple of weeks or a month or so later. And they were they were great on the show. Yeah, yeah. But like I tell everybody, you got to read this book. It's a really good book. It's yeah, book. it's, it's a, really a great book. book. Yeah. It's a really good book. And it, it kind of like just takes the romance out of the war, doesn't it? Yeah. Between your book, I think I told you this, between your book and their book, um, the whole romance of like, you know, the, the whole Hollywood idea right. that we have of, yeah. of war is just completely ruined, which I, is good. And I think for both of us, there's uh, our books bring a greater awareness to the physical environment, the power of the physical environment, and that we too often want to see these individuals, soldiers, uh men that could in fact rise above circumstances and that we see of course <laughs> that just wasn't possible yeah. but if we come to a place like Gettysburg and the pastoral landscape it plays upon our heroic view of war and so these men suddenly transcend the place the environment and uh, that physical world is so crucial and uh, Jack and Brown's book and Tim Silver the co-authors it's yeah. outstanding yeah, it's it is. really really good it really it's it's, it's too short you know, it, you know, I thought the same thing. I, I wanted had, more. I just, I, well, I'll just be honest. This morning, I needed to see it. I was giving a tour on food culture and the battle, and I don't really know very much about that. It took me forever to find the book, Chuck and Brownie's book, because it's it's, it's a small good. book. Yeah, yeah it, it covers though a hell of a lot, yeah. and it's it does very well written. It's yeah, it's really. good. I'm hoping their second edition will have like another 150 pages or something. <laughs> yeah, probably not. No, <laughs> well, yeah. like, a man know, can back, dream. But it goes back to Veronica. We had some I was eavesdropping, or what you were doing this weekend, and you said, "Oh, I was interested in civilians and other soldier stuff." But you know what? You are exactly the kind of person that comes to CWI broad-minded, interested in a wide range of things, and sees the connections between it. It doesn't say, oh, I just do military history, or I just do the social stuff, I just do civilian. I got, that is just nonsense. Those mm -hmm. are all boundaries and borders. We don't need that anymore. Right. And so going to the photography thing, man, that's elemental to understanding what this war meant yeah. to people. Elemental. So it's, and, and all that's good stuff. Where so we're anybody can go. You don't have to be a super no, nerd. You could God. be a beginner like Ronnie. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. You're not, what, a you're not a beginner? No, she's not a beginner. No. She's, she's going <laughs> you know, to the photography, no, man. i got to defend her. Man. <laughs> man, she's uh, a serious she's stuff. just going to fangirl over like Tim Smith and uh, <laughs> Phil Frazzanito. You're, you're, and, yeah, Gary you're, you're not a fangirl or you <laughs> no, are? I'm going. She oh, going. You're going. Yeah. yeah. I, I want a fan club. I don't have a fan club yet. No, you I want did, groupies. except I want Eric's, We can work on that. Eric's wedding ruined it. I'm sorry. We were going to establish the, the Pete Carmichael fan club I on October 9th. But yeah. Eric just like, Eric had to you know, get married. That's fine. There will be plenty of self-flagellation when I get home. So, Pete, I have oh, a question, wow. actually. The, the Civil War Institute, is that, a, I mean, do, do kids get a degree in that? Or what exactly yeah. is the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg? So we do have a minor in Civil War Studies, and so that I do oversee that program. And it obviously is centered in the American Civil War, although they take classes that give them an interdisciplinary work. Work, uh, look uh, uh, at, uh, at the war. Uh, they begin with a standard introduction uh, to the class. I have 30 students in my class this fall. We run two sections, 
Carol Reardon is teaching the other section. Oh, wow. <laughs> she cracks me up. You know, oh. these first year students, they have no idea. They have one of the, the preeminent right. military historians of her generation. <laughs> and they don't care. They don't even know. They do care, but they don't know. But they don't know. Right. She's sure so I'm not going to tell them. Sure. Well. well, yeah. So we have that introductory <laughs> class. And then we do a wide range of things, right? So we have a class on Gettysburg and history and memory. We have classes on leadership. So uh, there's a ways that students can immerse themselves in the Civil War. But we still insist that you know they look at this subject uh, from a broad historical context. So the institute, though, I think what I'm most proud of regarding the students is the Pohanka Internship Program. Mm -hmm. um, this honors Brian Pohanka. I'm sure many of your listeners and people in your audience, they know of him, died tragically of, of cancer and uh, his family. Uh, they have endowed, uh, they just reached the million dollar mark. Uh, mm. And we, because of their generosity, we place between 25 to 35 students during the summer at historical sites, almost all Civil War, from Vicksburg all the way up to Boston. And what an experience for these kids. Uh, they get a nice stipend from the Pohanka Endowment, and the national parks provide free housing. Hmm. We're on the front lines of history. So for the cynics out there, you say, oh, young people don't care about the past. And it's just not true. It's certainly not true at Gettysburg. And no. so that's, I go out every year, to Gettysburg, excuse me, to Fredericksburg and see our students. And listen, uh, even if I happen to write a great book, uh, but that's not Which you happen. did. No, uh, I mean, no. a book that's really going to stick, right? Like, uh, let's, talk, okay, it's, let's pretend like it's David McCulloch kind of book, oh, right? Oh, okay, right? yeah, right? yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right? nobody that can kind, do that. Right? Yeah. David McCulloch kind of book, right? But you know what? That fades, that passes. In time, it does. Yeah. I mean, who reads the beards? Charles and Mary Beard back in the 20th century? Man, they were it. Hell, you probably haven't, most of the people haven't even heard of them. But what won't pass? Won't what fade is this Pohanka program. It will always be there. It will always be channeling these young people to work at historic sites. And to see them out in the field, man, it's so much more rewarding than anything in terms of scholarly that I can And we're going to have some of them on yeah, the show uh, a couple of weeks or November, early November, I think. Right, Eric? Yeah, it's yeah. beginning of November. And that's going to be a Patreon episode, I believe, not a uh, live show, right? No, it's yeah, do it, a Patreon. No, it is for a Patreon. Yeah. Episode. Um, so yeah, so we're going to talk to them and see what it's like to uh, to be. What you you have uh, <clears throat> one of our uh, he's he was going to be here, but he he doesn't have transportation, and so he takes the bus down. But the bus schedule, I don't know, I don't know what his deal is. But uh, uh, Owen. Oh, you yes. know Owen. Yeah, of course. Owen. Yeah. He's wonderful kid. He's in my um, intro to the Civil War, 8.30 in the morning, Tuesdays really? and Thursdays. I hope you really bust his balls. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, give him a hard I time. go right after Ride him hard. Right. He thinks he knows everything. And just make him realize he knows nothing. That's crush that's his yeah. will. To crush his that. will. <laughs> <laughs> make him question all of his choices. You know, be tough on him. He needs to be slapped around a bit. So, you know. Well, as you know, that's what happens in the academy. We are not, we're not gentle people, right? No. It's, everyone says that we are nursery, right, and, and nurturers. We can't, Come, no. no not, not here. Not, not here. I can't, no, not. No, we rough the kids up here. Right, now, because unlike this place, this is a non-judgmental zone that I am in right now. It's, <laughs> it's refreshing for me in the yes. academy. I'm always a little uneasy, but. No, you know, no. But here, you Listen, know, it's not we will accept anyone in this place. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Mike Lentz raises his hand. Hello, Mike. <laughs> Poor Mike. <laughs> I know. I, just, I, feel, I know. I we feel tease for him. Mike. Feel what, for what, uh, what, what kind of product do you use in your hair? A lot of people are you wondering. You know what? I use a, a range of things. Mm -hmm. I started in my youth. I used to Coconut use conditioner? Mousse. I do. Oh. Absolutely. I do some coconut conditioner. It's, yeah, it's nice. It gives a nice smell as well. And then I just go to the hair gel, right? I mean, just get a little product in. Mm -hmm. You call it product these product, days. Right. You got to yeah, call yeah. it product, yeah. right? Yeah. And so my hair, my hair stylist, who's my best friend, uh, I met him when I was in grad school at Penn State. He is, still has his salon there. And I want to note salon. Any man in his right mind should not go to a barber shop. You go to a salon. <laughs> really? Absolutely. Yeah, don't let a barber touch your hair. And so <laughs> this my my friend, he's, he's the one that recommends the product for me. So, so and he has a, a bar, uh, so, salon. sorry. Salon, Forgive me. Look shop. on his face Man, when I almost said barber shop. I'm, I'm going to leave. <laughs> Say one more time. I'm done. Matt doesn't All right. listen to I'm me done. either. Don't, don't feel bad. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So he has his salon up in uh, State, College. Uh, State College. State College. So yeah. you go all the way up there to get your hair done. I do not. He I, comes I, to you. No, on occasion when I'm up there, but he recommends the product for me. I have someone I here see. in Gettysburg. Who I, my hair. I struggled. I had a hard time finding someone, and I will admit on live TV, <laughs> right here it goes, I used to drive. 
to Georgetown to get my hair cut. Really? Yeah, wow. Oh, gosh. That's dedication. I'm a prima donna. That's yeah. I'm a, I, am, I, am, I am a, I am a, I am a, I am a feet <laughs> academic. And yes, I am a prima donna. Right. I'm a prima wow. donna. Wow. I made it kind of a, you know, a day out for the, you know, guys day out. Go to Georgetown. Guys and, day out and you go and get your hair done? You go to Georgetown, get your hair done. Maybe, you know what? Okay, right. I'm going to What do you sit there with those dryers on your head, oh, reading man, the paper I am and gossiping? Telling, you know what? I'm going to take you to a salon. No, don't what? do that stuff. He doesn't what? even have right, I can't see he's got a ha- Oh, okay. Well, all right. <laughs> yeah. Didn't know that. Okay. Well, I, come on now. Okay, I mean, wait, he could get a Manny Petty. Here, you know what? That's true. Here's a plan B. Uh, for my uh, Father's Day, my, my wife and my children, they, they know me and they accept me. And they got me a gift certificate to a salon in Georgetown for a facial. And I loved it. Really? Oh, it's fantastic. So we'll go do facials together. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Very good. We'll go to uh, what mud? Like, they, is it mud or what? Are, what are the cucumbers on the eyes? They and all didn't that? do that. No, they do a lot of steaming. You got to get those pores clean. It's good mm. stuff, man. Is there really? really a like thing? It, yeah. I mean, you do look young. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm not. But right, I exactly. You That's that. my point. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, think of you know, think of me as sort of the George Pickett of Civil War historians. Okay, right? it's kind a, of a, a dandy, dandy. curl sure. his hairs, right? And 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 and, yeah. and then that brings me to my next question. Yeah. I noticed today you're not wearing your signature scarf. Is that only during the winter? It mostly it is mm-hmm. uh, because it's just still too warm for that, right? But you, I but, do like scarves. There's, yeah, I yeah, but that's book. your look. It, it is, and it just sort of happened. My wife was responsible for it. She got me my first scarf, and Good it was job. just from there. And I just love scarves yeah. and, and scarves and shirts. No, I'm an absolute materialist. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> well, good, good. <laughs> so you, you've got so the scarf thing. I mean, that has become your look, though. Like people know you as the scarf man. That's right. what they call you around town. <laughs> Scarf Man. Oh, Scarf Man was in for lunch today. <laughs> it could be a lot worse, couldn't it? It could. So I, I, yeah. It could. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I guess it is my thing. It is. I, I, it's, yeah. your, it's your, it's your, uh, like your brand. It's, card, yeah. it's my your, your brand. calling card. Yeah. yeah. It's my calling card. Yeah. Because you know what? If you can't stand on your ideas and your work, then that's what you do, right? I got to get noticed somehow. Right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. right. That's right. It is Scarf. It's kind of works. the only child in me, right? Notice me. Notice right. me. Right. That's... <laughs> Yeah, look at me. And you have a different scarf every time, and they're always very nice scarves. I do. I have a bullpen of them. Yeah, these Absolutely. aren't Walmart no, scarves. No, these are no, like man, cashmere are, and they, silk. and. Yeah, I don't know if I have many cashmeres, but they're, no, they're nice. Yeah, they they're are nice, nice. Nice scarves. And again, I've got my fashion consultant, my wife, and so I'm, I'm fortunate well, she, in that regard. She, yeah, she does a good job with that. She does, um, and, and finally, before she's, we take our break. If word gets back to her that we approve, I'm sure she'll, she'll sleep well tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what she's been wondering. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, She's yeah. like, do those guys like the way I yeah, dress people? I wonder what they think about my attire for people. Yeah. I yeah. just hope they don't pick on the way he dresses because it's all me and, and his friend in Penn well, State. Well, I, I am colorblind. I'm brown, green, red is my dangerous colors. So I don't know how I did today. I did this all on my own. Well, it's perfect. You I got mean, a purple shirt on. And and this is not purple. You, you don't even know what color I'm colorblind is. too. Your outfit looks very curated. <laughs> <laughs> my, my outfit, if you've not noticed... Yes, it's Morgan Bryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that you should have heard of her. She is uh, played on the women's World Cup team. Okay, she so she's won two World Cups. She played college soccer at the University of Virginia. Happens to be my cousin. I bring this up. It connects to the Civil War. And I said to her, "You're at UVA. I hope you're going to take some history and maybe some Civil War history. What do you think?" Nothing. Not it. <laughs> no history. Oh, that's impossible. That you should not be allowed to get through UVA. So it's not uh, a requirement. I, apparently not. Not for soccer players. Not for soccer. And, she's, she was, and she is good, but she really, really good. She won what's She the, would have been better with history. Absolutely. Yeah. So I in, in my act of retaliation, I was at UVA doing li- some library work outside the Alderman, right? That's the main library at UVA. I took a selfie. You see the Alderman behind me. I put it on her Facebook page. I said, at least one member of our family knows where the library is located at UVA. <laughs> <laughs> she was on Facebook, of course. On <laughs> Now, were you a soccer player? I'm from Indiana, and I was at, so old that soccer was, was not just a thing. starting. Interestingly enough, a little uh, fun fact about me, my father's Ecuadorian. Uh, my parents really? got, hmm. my, my dad met my mom in Indiana, came up from Quito. And uh, of course, he wanted me to play soccer. Parents got divorced when I was young. I didn't meet my dad, my biological father, until much later. But my grandfather and my mom would always tell me, do you realize if your father would have stayed, you would have played 
soccer. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world because, of course, Indiana is a yeah. basketball state. Sure, sure. Right, so they're like, yeah, you dodged a bullet, son. <laughs> Your dad abandoned you, but hey, you're not playing soccer. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't abandon me. Or maybe he did. Just a little bit. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> Uh, my brother-in-law is Ecuadorian. And no way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh. Part Ecuadorian and part Polish. Yeah. Yeah. Nice mix. Yeah. His father still goes down there to Ecuador. I've not know. been, but I am intending to do that maybe even next year. When he has to get sure. medical treatment, he goes there, pays cash for like a, a third of what it costs here. And uh, it's like, boom, 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 you're done. Uh -huh. It's right. wonderful. Yeah. Well, just think what I'll do down there. I'll have all kinds of facials I'll get down there. <laughs> I guess if that's what you want to do, Pete. <laughs> Half the price, quarter of the price. <laughs> Beat Georgetown prices, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and uh, in Philippi, West Virginia, yeah. there's a college there. Do you know the name of it? I do not. Uh, I'll tell you right now. Well, actually, my friend Cam will tell you. Osterspin Brodison. So, you, <laughs> what in God's name was that? <laughs> Osterspin Brodison. Otterburn <laughs> Broderburn. <laughs> Duh. That's it. You never heard of it? I have not. <laughs> well, it's there. Alderspin Brodison. <laughs> It's, What's uh, it's really called? It's uh, Alderson Brodus. Brodus, I think. Right? right. Have you ever heard of it? I have not. No, no. I've been there. Alderson Brodus. You never saw signs for Alderson Brodus? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. <laughs> because everyone's there to look at the covered bridge, right? <laughs> right. That, that's where the battle, the fighting occurred, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There for the covered oh, bridge. Oh, no. Yeah. We've heard all about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, all right, so we're going to take a break because we went over there, but stick around right. and join us for the rest of the show, sure. and we'll talk about a bunch of stuff, okay? Sure. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Have something to add to the conversation? Give us a call at 717-420-1978 and get in the queue. Gettysburg, a nation divided mobile app is relaunching this summer. Gettysburg, a nation divided is an award-winning mixed reality mobile application using augmented reality technology. It transports users into the most crucial moments in the Battle of Gettysburg, the turning point of the Civil War. Users can listen and watch historic figures share their stories as lifelike animated avatars, traverse 360 degree image sequences of the battlefield. Its cinematic battle sequences are narrated by actor Scott Eastwood. The mobile app is available for free on iOS and Android. It's designed to be used anywhere, at home, at school, at the park, or at Gettysburg National Military Park. It uses GPS to help guide you through your journey to see the stories and events unfold at the exact location where they occurred. So go into your phone's app store and get it now for free. That's Gettysburg, a nation divided. Need a core badge or other insignia for your uniform? Then check out the badge maker. Here's what some of his satisfied customers had to say. Miranda said, I ordered an identification disc from Joe and it's fantastic. He hand stamped it exactly as I wanted. It has a great rough on campaign feel to it and was reasonably priced to boot. Greg said, my unit has purchased from him in the past. Quality badges and good service. And Jerry S says, the badge maker is the go-to place for accurate replica Civil War badges. Visit CivilWarCoreBadges.com and attach a message with your order saying you heard about him on Addressing Gettysburg. Our favorite bookstore in Gettysburg is For the Historian, located at 42 York Street. Isn't it, Eric? You're darn tootin', Matt. <laughs> it's because they have the best selection of Civil War books in Gettysburg, both new and used, and online they have even more books to choose from. But Matthew, what if the Civil War is simply not my thing? Not a problem, my fine four-offended friend. This is for the historian, after all. They cover history from the ancient world to the 21st century with a strong selection of World War II and American Revolution books. It's astounding how they squeeze thousands of titles from Oscar. Spray, Savas Beatty, UNC Press, and more into their store. And it's also astounding how you and I both squeeze into our pants every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, handsome, they have a warehouse too, and that's where they keep all those books that are available online at ForTheHistorian.com. And folks, if you go to ForTheHistorian.com now and order books until you're blue 
in the face, be sure you mention that you heard about them on Addressing Gettysburg in the Note to Seller box, and they will refund your shipping costs. What if I prefer to browse in the store and don't want to go online to get my books? Great question, Doodlebug. Just mention Addressing Gettysburg at checkout, and they'll take 20% off the retail price of your item. So go to ForTheHistorian.com, stop by 42 York Street, or call 717-685-5207. That's ForTheHistorian.com or 717-685-5207. Ah, the season is finally here. 2021 is going to be a great year, and we know that you're going to come down to Gettysburg. And when you do come down to Gettysburg... You gotta take a tour with Getty's Bike Tours. Getty's Bike Tours has been in business since 2005. It is the best way to see the battlefield. Why? Because you don't just see the battlefield, you experience the battlefield. Our tours are led by some of the finest licensed battlefield guides out there, and they make sure that you walk away with a full understanding of what happened here on those three days in 1863. Here's the best part. Because you're an Address in Gettysburg listener, you're gonna get 15% off when you make your reservation. Now this discount only applies to tours. So go to gettysbike.com or call 717-752-7752 and book a tour today. Getty's Bike Tours. Think outside the bus. Audiobook narrator Mike Scott. When selecting your next audiobook, choose from some of the great titles narrated by audiobook narrator Mike Scott, like Bloody Autumn, the Shenandoah Valley Campaign of 1864. And if you're an author or publisher interested in having your written works produced as audiobooks, give Mike a shout at MikeScottVoice.com. Mike Scott, the voice of history. And Civil War Trails. It's the world's largest open-air museum, and they offer over 1,300 sites across six states. Drive the Gettysburg Campaign turn by turn, paddle to Frederick Douglass' birthplace, or hike to remote earthworks and artillery positions. Visit CivilWarTrails.org to request a brochure and explore their interactive map. Follow Civil War Trails and create some history of your own. Are you planning on spending some time in Gettysburg soon? Well, you should. So check out GettysburgBattlefieldTours.com as your source for things to do. Tickets are available for exclusive experiences such as the Sunset Double Decker Battlefield Tour, Adams County Port Tour Shuttle, and Discoveries Beyond Gettysburg. For details, follow them on Facebook or visit GettysburgBattlefieldTours.com. There's no better way to see the town you're visiting than to eat your way through it. Enjoy a culinary and cultural experience through historic downtown Gettysburg, one delicious bite at a time, with Savor Gettysburg Food Tours. Their season runs April through November with a special Christmas tastes and traditions walking food tour during the month of December. Savor Gettysburg Food Tours offers an unmatched three-hour food tasting experience, coupled with a cultural and historical walking tour of the town of Gettysburg. Their walking food tour lets you get an inside view and taste of Gettysburg's most loved eateries. Choose from several unique tours. Experience the history and culture that only Gettysburg can offer. Go to SaverGettysburgFoodTours.com and enter the promo code AG2021 to receive $5 off. Eat, walk, and savor Gettysburg. What's up, everybody? It's Pat McGuire, co-host of the History Things Podcast. Co-host Matt Borders and I offer a fresh new podcast taking on some of the most famous as well as some of the most unheard of stories from U.S. and world history. Always conversational and approachable, we take the deep dives that you want into history, as well as exploring the rabbit holes that you didn't even ask us to. New episodes every quarter with follow-up episodes roughly 30 to 40 days afterwards. Download the History Things podcast on most major podcast apps, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and by asking your Amazon Alexa smart device to play the History Things podcast. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the History Things podcast. As always, thanks for listening. Now back to the show. Sprayed with potassium sorbate to prevent mold growth. You're back with Matt and Veronica. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome back. <clears throat> um, all right. So Eric tells me <laughs> that uh, we had some questions uh, in the comment section for Pete Carmichael, our guest today. So, Eric, go ahead to uh, read those questions for couple us. Couple two, three. Couple two, couple three. Couple two, three. Um, all right. So, first one, Owen Lanier. <clears throat> oh, we know him. We know as one of your students yes. says, question, 
if a hypothetical, yeah, hypothetical, <laughs> Owen wants to know if he wrote a paper on the Civil War and made the argument that the Founding Fathers' refusal to tackle slavery's institutionalization in American life made it inevitable, could they get a B? A B? <laughs> you know, I'm baffled by the question. The question Same. is that. It's so dense and so complicated, I have to unpack that. Well, Owen is dense. He is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just another example of where the Gettysburg students are better than the professors. Uh-huh. I, I, I guess so. Like... You know, tell Owen that he needs to aim a little bit lower. And also tell Owen that in class, that to speak slowly for the professor. I, just, you know, the wheels don't turn as quickly as I once did. Speak slowly for Dr. Aldrich Gallagher. Brought us in. Yeah. Okay. So speak slowly, speak Owen. Speak slowly for Pete, please. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So the next one. This one's going to be a lot to unpack. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. Question. Do you see a big difference between the Western and Eastern federal soldiers? Oh, this is you, we talked about this when you were on the show. Yeah. Uh, I, I would have this individual turn to Joseph Glattar's very first book, To the Sea and Beyond. It's a great book, mm-hmm. a book that uh, is overlooked because of McPherson's important scholarship on uh, the common soldier. Uh, Glattar, in many ways, foreshadowed um, McPherson's findings. And To the Sea and Beyond looks at Western soldiers and looks at their characteristics from not just how they fought, how they marched, but also their ideas and their approach. And out of doubt, they certainly had a, how about for an academic word, ready? Sensibility, right? Mm. But you sure they said that. I'm sure Sherman's men said, you know what? We have a different sensibility <laughs> than those Eastern soldiers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they did. I'm quite sure they did. So yes, I'd say there are some significant differences uh, 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 between them. And I don't know if we really have a good book that spelled that out. I can't think well, of anything off the top of my head. asked it in the, the context of your book, actually. <clears throat> yeah. Is, the gentleman that wrote the question said he just started your book, and mm-hmm. that was what, I guess, inspired the inspired question. Inspired it. Well, mm. I hate to say this. I don't think he's going to find the answer in my book. <laughs> uh, oh. But at least he's not saying what. Uh, this is a uh, guy was trying to be very nice, met me. It's my first book. He said, uh, I'm going to introduce you to my wife. I said, all right. That is very nice. Said, yeah, very nice. It's very sweet. Yeah, that usually doesn't happen. I get introduced to women. I'm like, okay, all right, where could this lead? Right? And so he said, honey, this is the man who is the author of the book that I've been reading. And she said, oh, the book you fall asleep to every night? <laughs> uh, better than my mother, though. My mom said to me after my recent book, she said, uh, Peter, when are you going to write a book? That people are gonna enjoy reading. Oh, oh. you know. But no, wait, now she, my mom, she, my so mom rude. gave me, my mom gave me a three-star Amazon review. Oh, she, so I made up for three, three stars. Star? Yeah. yeah, three stars. Good that's God. from tough that's some tough love. Yeah. Mom, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Yeah. She, she wants you to work harder, not a nurturer, right? Yeah, work hard, work, work harder. Don't play soccer, right? Play basketball, right? right? Yes, there exactly. will be no soccer. But if you want to get a facial, Pete, and you. Product, that's okay. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you get three stars. When you get three stars. You're like, I can't handle this. I'm going to go get a facial. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry. I, seriously, my book does not address that. It should have. If there is a limitation in my book, and it's hard to imagine that there is a limitation in my book, unless you ask my mom. But if there is a limitation in my book, is I, I don't do enough with the West, whether it's Confederate or Union. Uh, I should have spent more time on the Western soldier. My, my heart, my interest is in the East, but I should have done more. I, I mean, I, it's been a while since I listened to the interview that you did, but ladies and gentlemen, it is free now on our uh, free feed. I think it was released in December during our seven days of Christmas uh, yeah. spectacular. But so you can go and listen yourself. But I, I think th- I do remember this sort of coming up, and uh, I can't remember what it was that you said. So there's really no point in me bringing this up except to plug the show and direct people to go and listen to it there. And, yeah. and then we can talk, uh, they can listen to what you had to do about whatever. And, uh, yeah. Technically, plug the book. I don't think we've mentioned the name. Uh, we have it. The War for the Common Soldier. The War for the Common Soldier. And it, it's also in paper now, so it's, ah. it's affordable in a yeah. way that it, I don't think it was before. It's not $95 in hardback, though. God, can you believe that? That's, that's the way of the <laughs> academic presses. Well, what? That's Mike Lentz right. is flipping around. What's. <laughs> Yeah, for the historian. There's a copy of it for the historian? Oh, yeah, the, yes, yes. Oh, yeah for sure. That's $95? No, no, no. Oh. no. It's no. portable, but yes. Yeah. We don't ha- obviously, we don't have Jill Titus's book yet. We do have Pete's yes. book. It's right. on the show. So you'll get Jill. Yeah. So th- this is <laughs> yeah. now the trend in academic publishing. When the book is released, they do a paper and hardback at the same time. Right. And they'll do a hardback that's maybe certainly no more than 100 books. 
Uh, it's just the financial realities. So it's realities. because it's limited. And, and it's because it's so of the expensive. financial realities. It's just too hard now to push hardback books. Also, they want to give um, classrooms an opportunity to, to get to, to get that book. Right? Uh, Obviously, a paperback's a lot less. What I, do you I, prefer, I hard or soft? Oh. <laughs> Books, people. Dep- <laughs> That's right. God bless America. I was going to say, de- de- it's interesting that the professor is the one that went there. <laughs> what? I didn't go there. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, like, like, you didn't even like pause for a second. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I do have tenure, but tenure doesn't protect you from everything. Let's really? just be clear about that. Right, right. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that is gross. Okay, so, so do you, do you pre- I prefer a hardcover. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I like a hardcover. But there are certain books that I want a, a paperback. For example, uh, Fighting for the Confederacy, mm-hmm. E.P. Alexander's. How many mm-hmm. of you read that in here? Yeah. I mean, everybody should have. It's a, my, uh, it's a Bible, really. Sure. And so you take that out on the field and... Uh, Boy, that's true. Right, you can beat that up and not feel badly about it. You can do your little notations. Yeah, in it and, and, you know, no, that's a good matter. point. Like I like uh, uh, like Godfrey's map book. Yes. I have soft cover, hard cover. Hard covers for home. Soft yes. cover is in my yes. battlefield bag. He is a good dude. Yeah. Has he been on this show? No, not yet. Oh, no, he, he contacted us, yeah. and then I said we'd love to have you on, and I haven't heard from him since. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'll get him on your show just like I got Gary Gallagher. Oh, for, for <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, there. If we need but you, you know what? You have gotten more people on the show than not so yes Gallagher was the first no I think I probably what what's my batting average for y'all um, apparently over two <laughs> <laughs> can only I'm get better counting, yeah. can only get better <laughs> go, can only go up, up from here I don't know listen we got Jill Hyde, Titus on yeah. we got Ashley Lusky yeah. we got Brian Brian Lusky as well um, we had got you huh? um Hancock? Was that a referral? No, no, that was, no, that was okay. directly. Uh, Kim Ashton Brown. Is he going to be on here? I'm sure he will be. Yeah, we have to pick a date. Yeah, oh, still. he's great. But You'll we, like but that. you got, yeah, that, um, you, you, that was a couple of weeks ago. And then who was the other person? Um, There's been I just others. got her book. Carolyn Janey. Thank you, oh, Carrie. Nice. Yeah, she's in yeah. town right now. In fact, giving is a battlefield really? tour right now. Well, why is she not here? She should be here. I yes. told you about the end of wars. That was a really interesting book. I have book. it. Yeah, I have it. I it it, it came really because we're on the reviewer list, and uh, I said, Neat. and it is good. Yeah. I, I, I read the first chapter, and I'm like, oh, I like this. This is this is cool because it's stuff you never really right. hear about. I was gonna say it's another topic I would have never, yeah. I, I never yeah. thought about. Obviously, we know about the surrender, and then you don't uh, really think uh, about too much after. Like she makes she makes the point in the book. Like we think it's just boom. It just magic. Magically ended then, but no, it doesn't. Well, she's a fantastic historian. She'd be great, seriously, on, on this show. And she and I are doing a, uh, a class for the great courses. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're doing on great battles of the American Civil War. So it's going to be oh, very fun. Nice. I really enjoy working with her. She's, she's cool. Great. She's great. Cool. So you got a lot of stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Now, uh, was there another one, Eric? Um, yeah, there's one more. Okay, go ahead. And this is actually for you. Uh, for me or for Pete? For you. Oh, oh. nice. She wants to know what uh, what do you use on your hair? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I told you not to watch the show. <laughs> uh, what I use is um, I, I just uh, the the same thing I put in my beard. I just use on my head. Why? Because your scalp gets dry. You have less hair on your head. Than no, you don't use it face. for your hair. You use it for your skin. Just use some jerkins on your head. You go jerking on my head. <laughs> What? No, no. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. We're getting. Oh, 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 I went over the line. <laughs> okay, whatever. Me love you long, Tim. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got some emails here. We're gonna get some uh, listener emails in here. This one here is uh, from our buddy Dave over at TR Historical. Uh, you, you'll notice that when uh, we do a special episode that you know maybe has only one guest or something, like when we did the Chris Gwynn thing, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it was um, there was no commercial break. It was brought to you by one sponsor, and uh, Dave uh, at uh, TR Historical uh, sent this in. He says, Matt, just wanted to say thank you for your support and helping me grow my business through the sponsorships. I'm looking forward to the results, which are likely to keep coming in through the year as the shows are listened to. Also, as I said before, I'm a huge fan of the quality content and delighted to see your unique brand grow into new shows, events, a book club, etc. He mentions the book club. Veronica and Mike, you're both in the book club. And we had our first, or you guys had your first one. Was it was last week already? It was a week or two weeks ago. Yeah, It'll be two weeks this coming Wednesday. Okay, so this Wednesday is the next one. So you do them every other week. Mm-hmm. And how many people were in uh, the first uh, book club meeting? 34 or 35. 35. Yep. That's 
That's Crazy. fantastic. On, on yeah. the Zoom, fantastic. I mean, they're, yeah. they're about 50, 55 that are actually signed up for the email chain right. and that participate, but but that actually were able to participate. And we That's a lot more than a lot I expected. Because we have people literally in Hawaii, yeah. I mean, all across the country. So yeah. the time zones are a little bit difficult. So right. we do it at 8.30 in the evening, Eastern time. So it's still kind of... So, so how'd you do this? Zoom? Zoom. Really? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. That's great. What is the There's, book? Uh, we're actually reading Stephen Sears' Gettysburg just oh, as a start, like right. a jump-off point. Yeah. But uh, the the gentleman that's pretty much like coordinating it, Steve Byers, is doing a phenomenal job. Yeah. He's an educator, yeah. high school teacher, and he right. obviously put a lot of work into it, kept yeah. the conversation right. flowing. And yeah. you know, so what I'm hearing is he's yeah. like a really good uh, host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. that's so, good. So when's War for the Common Soldier? I guess that's next. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> uh, it's actually <laughs> right. no, it is on the list of oh, things. Okay. Uh, we we came up with a list of a couple of them. That one, environmental history. Um, and then other Gettysburg books too. But I was like, you got to get these two in because like people got to get an idea of like what it was like just for the guys and just their everyday life. Right. So those are the two books. I, I really wasn't trying. No, I know. Myself but, up right but, now. But, I, I feel embarrassed. I feel shamed. No. <laughs> you should. You can't be a real academic if you're actually promoting your work, right? Uh, because right. we want our stuff to be obscure and not read, right? That's the hallmark <laughs> of a genius, right? <laughs> right? It's so brilliant. Yeah. Nobody can make sense of it. Right. Yeah. Well. That's still my pet peeve in my field. I hate that. Right? Oh, I, this person is so convoluted in how they speak. Well, there's something so great that it's unreachable, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, it doesn't happen a lot, but it happens too much, right? We, and then, but you know, do do you get like shit for promoting your stuff? No, 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 not, no, not really. I mean, I, no, absolutely not. Especially not in, in the department. At Gettysburg College. You're a famous like, guy, though. What what kind of shit do you get from people? I mean, you've been on TV shows. You've yes. been, yeah. What what, yes. what what do people say about you or to you that well, is mean? Uh, well, you'll get things that uh, usually lost causers will come after me pretty hard. Of but that's some, they come after everybody. They come though. after everyone. But even they're just that's, mad they lost. Well, they are a little upset, right? I get <laughs> yeah. it. So I try to be sensitive <laughs> to them in all seriousness. I try to acknowledge their point and try to sort of you know they at least create a conversation. I never try to go. You know, and sort of a direct counterattack. Right. What they're saying, it just doesn't get very far no. at all. But I usually sort of crumble under when somebody recognizes me and then say something completely idiotic that then makes me look like I'm a pompous ass. I'll give you a quick example. <laughs> Some, I shouldn't be jealous because my wife makes fun of me all the time. Now everyone can make fun of me. I was walking down the street at Gettysburg and this guy's like, oh, Dr. Carmichael this. Like, I don't care for that. I'm just Pete, right? Right. And I, instead of just right. saying, just call me Pete. No, I had to say, oh, wait, it's not Dr. Carmichael. That's my TV persona. <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? As soon as I said it, I t- <laughs> and of course my wife is there to hear it. So someone, of course, it's right. forever. So yeah, people come up and they're actually they're they're, they're super nice, right? And uh, and it's all really about the conference. It's all on C-SPAN. I mean, who would have ever thought people actually watch C-SPAN three? Right? Yeah, I mean, that's right. but seriously, yeah. they actually no, do watch it. So sure, they do. So yeah, no, of course it's it's gratifying. I mean, that's really the only place you can find history anymore. Yeah, absolutely. C-SPAN, you're absolutely not right. on the History Channel. No, not no, not at all. But we've seen you on the History Channel, though. We've seen you on shows. I've done that some have, stuff yeah. for them. Yeah, I did one thing for them that I'm just again. Would if I had the money, I would pay to get it taken off air forever. It was uh-huh. some Gettysburg show, and the director was like, "Come on, man, you got to give more of yourself." I'm like, yeah. "What? I'm, I'm a historian, not an actor." So I'm trying to listen to the director, and I just look like you can only imagine <laughs> so there's been you know one or two experiences where you're like eh, that wasn't so good yeah i did something for the battlefield trust before they were the trust and i was having a bad day and gary edelman was filming me and if he ever uses us out he's takes, like use your hands man use more hands you need more energy Pete. <laughs> but i used a lot of bad language which he got because i kept messing up and uh-huh. I, was, I was getting more and more pressure but you know after a while you know, just get used yeah to you're a human being like human everybody being, else like everyone do, right? do people yeah. give you shit about your scarves no, I mean, they, it means more to them than it does to me. I mean, it's just kind of a scarf. I like the I mean, look. that's how I knew you before I right, knew you. It was a scarf. Uh, it yeah. was like, oh, there's Pete with his scarf again. Well, you know, I... <laughs> Dr. Sorry, Carmichael I, But see, there you go. The that's, time. That, that's the point. You that's wearing I that. I don't like to be perceived as this aloof academic, Gettysburg College, but then... Look how I dress. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's it's mixed met. I'll be okay. Absolutely. Let me be honest with you. Before I met you, no, he's a pompous ass. I thought you were a pompous ass of because of the scarf. Right. right okay. Right, but right, quite approachable. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But it was like. But then I met him. He's like a, just a dude. And it's like he's a nice a guy. And then I called him Doctor Carmichael when I met him. He goes, "That's Pete." Yep. Right. And yep. I said, "Well, now I feel weird." 
Because you went through all the trouble to get that doctor before your name, you know? We call her Veronica Brestensky Esquire because she went she went to all the trouble to get that Esquire. Absolutely. Yeah. The one scarf, I can, a story I remember at WVU, I'm walking in to teach my class, and there's a big circle of dudes, right? And it's like, uh-oh, it's like high school. You yeah. know what's going down. Right? There's a fight. Yeah. I'm the faculty member. I, I have got to step in, right? Yeah. So I step in, and I had one of my favorite scarves. It's a colorful rainbow, right? So I've got that scarf, and I swear I think it saved my life. <laughs> I, got, I got in front of this guy who could have kicked my ass in a second, oh and I said, I had to do it, right? I'm the professor. I said, listen, man, you need to walk away from this because yeah. it won't go down well for you. And I'm sure he looked at me and thought, man, this is a feet academic I can't possibly, like, he, it's too easy. Right, he, right. So the scarf saved my life. He saw the scarf saved me. <laughs> well, good. Thank God. Well, maybe we should all wear scarves then. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I just right. use my beard. <laughs> yeah, the beard scares people away, for sure. It scares children, that's for sure. Yeah. But you're yeah. very good with kids, though. I've seen you when we've had kids here at the bike I tours. And yeah, you're good. You hate kids adults, awesome, but you but love like, kids. I absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's a, It's really, it's something. Have you ever seen him with kids, Veronica? His own. I mean, no, yeah, his own well, he's horrible yeah. with. But, like, <laughs> no, thanks. He's good. No, I'm just kidding. He's good with his kids. Yeah. But I mean, with like strangers' kids, he like, you know, he's like, uh, he was out here once helping one, you know, fix the bike. Oh, cool. He squatted down. This guy's got some bad knees. He's got yeah. a bad back, but he's got down at their level. And oh, he was wow. like, oh, with them. And just like, oh my God. Like, I'm she 14 was like a, years old. She was like a five year old girl. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was I fixing she was the adorable. Bike. Yeah. But it was great. That's he was cool. great with the kid. You're ruining his reputation, know. you know. Well, I want to because, but I look mean as hell apparently yeah, because like small yeah. children are terrifying yeah. to me yeah. until I start doing like the stupid baby <laughs> voice. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get some listener emails here, and then we're going to get to Veronica's news. There's not a lot of news she tells me, so we'll uh, we'll be done here in a, a little bit. Uh, Matt, thank you for pursuing your passion and producing this content. I was a freeloading stalker for about a year on iHeartRadio after I stumbled on your podcast via a random search. I should have become a patron far earlier. Even though I thought I knew about Gettysburg and had a great or had a general interest, after our first trip there in 2019, I got the bug and realized the depth of my ignorance about the battle. We made another trip in 2020, and I saw Peter Carmichael walking down the street with his scarf on. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. <laughs> and I've read a few books. <laughs> it is a really special place. I'm very pumped that my wife, Trisha, and I are coming back in a couple of weeks, so I will really get to nerd out. Thanks again for all you do, as it is definitely advancing the knowledge and value of this critical place. From Kevin Widener, new patron. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Matt, Eric, and Veronica. This is all of us, so everybody oh. listen up. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long to realize this, but I'm super impressed by the job you all do each week on AG Today. What I didn't realize is that it's all done live and runs very smoothly when your internet is cooperating. That's fair. You, yeah, <laughs> you all should be proud of yourselves. It takes talent. Most other people who do what you do it takes a, oh, it takes a talent most other people who do what you do sorely lack. Well, you don't have to put other people down. Uh, <laughs> keep it up. Tim Wilder from Bangor, Maine. All right, Tim. Thank you very much oh, for all nice. that uh, kind uh, language there. Can I, real and, quick, yeah. I, just, I actually just want to throw one in. Um, I did get a private message from Mike Stretch. Oh, yeah. Um, designer of designer logos, of our logos, t-shirts. t-shirts. Products. Really nice uh, of him. I just want to personally send a shout out well he's the one that called you vicky in the first place so he he <laughs> owes you some nice words <laughs> no um so after the 9 11 special show that we did he reached out and uh i'm, I'm not going to read it because it was fairly personal but I, i'm paraphrasing that he was appreciative of us taking it um seriously and putting our heart kind of opening our heart yeah. to reliving that and uh well why would we make a joke about 9 11 no but I, well i, I mean I had a little breakdown there when we yeah. were counting, you know, towards the end of the and buildings I didn't, collapsing I didn't try and things to like that. And, exploit and, it and make it you cry more or anything. Well, thank you. I yeah. appreciate that because it would have been easy. Oh, that, I was, was that was tough to. reliving that, to I be honest. To, but it was nice that Mike took the time to I had to acknowledge cut off us. Her so. camera. Well, thank you, Mike. It was ugly crying, as yeah. what I was told. She has, like, the <laughs> ugliest crying face. Oh, my God. Man. Well, I like, like, what do you look like when you cry? So I don't know what, like, categories we put Oh, God, stop that. That's crazy talk. But seriously, Mike, thank you for, he said he wasn't able to watch live, but he did see the video afterwards. And uh, 
What are we laughing at? He, he just that. said she has the ugliest <laughs> crying, crying face. face. Yeah. Apparently, I, just, I started going. I don't know. I don't know what oh I did. God. I don't know. No, your face contorts in ways that I like, like. I was trying to stifle it back yeah. as it. Just, I didn't like, it notice. Just hit me when I was looking right at you, and I. I'm like, we'll go back and check it. Later. We'll have to go and look. <laughs> but go ahead. You were probably too busy in your own mind weighing. I'm like, I, how do I do keep, this? Right, what I do I do? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I keep? Which sound effect works with this? Anyway, go ahead. I just want to thank you. Thanks, Mike. Oh, real quick before we move on, Estella Beard suggested that we start peddling Dr. Carmichael scarves <laughs> along with our Tim Smith cool t-shirts. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> so there we go. We'll get we'll get Pete's face made as a meme. <laughs> And put, and it, on put it on a scarf. Yeah, like those soccer club <laughs> scarves. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. I'll All right. Like we'll it. get working on that. We just need to find a place to sell scarves. Oh. I don't know. Hey, we An online scarf uh, maker. There's a lot of Amish ladies that live over in like Lancaster. <laughs> we'll just buy a bunch just of them. Knit them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> His knitted face. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> that would look pretty mealy. Takes some <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have you heard what's going on in Gettysburg? Well, Veronica Brestensky, Esquire, has the scoop. I must have all possible information. Remember, it's the news. News first. <laughs> news first, not, Veronica. Not okay. Current events afterwards. Well, I guess this is or news. Or weekend afterwards. This okay. is newsworthy. Uh, we have a new store in town. Just yeah. Just opened yesterday uh, called Oh Man. We just saw that on the way in. We well, did. literally just opened yesterday. So okay. Well, that makes sense. I don't remember sense. any kind of like announcement or anything, no, but it took no. over the old House of Bender or House of Time, whatever that was called, right on the southwest quadrant of the square. Right what is it? To, so it is the owners of Lark and the, uh, what's their other, oh gosh, what's the name of what's their Lark? other? What's Lark? The little it's, store uh, next to the bakery. Yeah, exactly. On basically the opposite. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 okay. Lark kind of specializes in like, uh, other yeah stuff. girly like, stuff yeah so, oh so this is guy stuff this is guy stuff it's oh, it's literally okay. called oh man and it's like a man centric store um oh, i might that, be interested in this then. yeah yeah so. maybe we could go in there and get some facial cream Pete. <laughs> well that's i'm curious what makes it man centric yeah um, like like sell jock straps yeah. <laughs> right right <laughs> God willing, <laughs> designer. Ones. I don't know. Designer jack straps. Yeah, absolutely. So they, like you with know, Pete's face on it. <laughs> my face on it. Comes with a scarf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jock strap and the Peter Carmichael jock strap and scarf. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's the whole package. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. Sorry. Well done. Sorry, guys. Oh, that Sorry. Was that was good. That, that was good. good. That, that was, was good, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so, Veronica, what makes it a man-centric store? So, it, oh. it stereotypically uh, carries stuff that men would like. You know, literally, like, everything from Swiss Army knives and... Uh, oh. Um, I don't like Swiss cig Army knives. Cigar box uh, banjos. Like, th like, things uh, oh, like... Oh, yeah. yeah like, like I mean, a, just... Just like guy man stuff, stuff, right? Like things stuff you would, would put in your man cave. But is right. there beard product? There might oh, be. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I would hope so. So this is interesting. So the husband and uh, Nerd Herd is their other store. Oh, okay. on Baltimore. So they, so they, they, own, own, they own all three now. People. So the story goes that they were yeah. actually looking for some storage uh, space in town because when the pandemic hit, they were having trouble getting like inventory. Uh -huh. So they wanted to basically hoard up on inventory, and the idea was they were looking for storage space for the upcoming holiday season for their two stores, Lark and Nerd Herd. Mm -hmm. And then House of Bender went under or moved or whatever they did, and uh, or House of Time, I guess it was. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so they looked at that as storage space and realized it was way too nice for storage space. They wanted to open up a, an actual store there and to complement Lark. When they have women coming in saying, oh, I want to get a gift for my husband mm -hmm. or boyfriend or whatever. They're like, well, how about right next to the cigar shop? Brilliant. You can go right in. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So it's exciting. Another shop. That's good news. Sure. But, yeah. Is that across from Blue and Gray? It is. Close. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right in the there. corner there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I have to say I'm nervous about going in because what if I go in and I don't find anything? Then you're not a man. There you go. <laughs> I can't take that chance. <laughs> I've come too far. I've come too far to have that kind of crisis in my life. I can't do it. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so we got so a new a store in new town. store and kind of related story. Just on Monday, uh, the council approved a zoning very... Sorry, I just had a... Come on, man. Because we had the new store, so the more you know. Go ahead. Oh, the more you know. Okay. Yeah. I don't get that. I don't, I don't either. It, it, I, I had to get it in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <sighs> so kind of related, the uh, beer outlet, Beer Mart, on, what is it, High Street? Yeah. High Street Brews oh, actually yeah. got uh, a variance to add on more space um, to, to their 
place. Wow. So that's good. So, it's expanding. Yeah, I guess there's beer. some demand. And, um, the, you think? Right? <laughs> there's some demand <laughs> there's for some more demand. beer. Yeah. And there's a, an increase in overall um, product availability and things that weren't there when they first opened. Mm, sure. So yeah. they were officially granted. There, are a, there do seem to be a lot more beers out there nowadays. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I don't know to the extent, like, obviously there's IPA a lot of craft. Freaks. Yeah. But I don't know how much that, like, stuff is actually sold in beer stores but everything from like you know bud light lime and coolers that are flavored all yeah. kinds of all kinds of oh stuff. Yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. they got their right, expanding good, good good for them um this i mean this is i guess newsworthy so our neighbors down the fairfield road in fairfield pennsylvania are going to be celebrating the 40th anniversary of pippin fest oh this yes weekend. yes so, taris uh, from the irreverent warriors is going to be up for that and he told me to come out oh neat yeah so I never knew, I mean, I never knew what Pippin Fest was about, right? So Apples. back in the eight, yeah, oh. in 1980, the, uh, the then owner of what is now the mansion, um, I guess, hotel and, and restaurant and everything. Mansion um, house. The mansion Delicious. house. Delicious. Have we gone there? No, we haven't. No, we no. have to go there. It used to be called the Fairfield Inn. Right. And the owner at that time in 1980 wanted to kind of honor um, the first apple that came over, I guess, with the colonists. And it was called the Pippin. And mm. Apple, so that's huh. where they. I never knew all that. So that's where they get the, the fest. And it's kind of like treated as a homecoming. Um, huh. They said, you know, Saturday and Sunday from ten to four, both days. There's going to be like a yard sale, and then crafts and vendors, and petting zoo for the kids. And they're on t- uh, Sunday. I'm sorry, on Saturday at ten a.m. They're actually dedicating the, the tree that was planted behind what is now the mansion. Uh, in right there that's still there now there it's not doing super well they're actually the new owners are looking into maybe grafting that to preserve the lineage of whatever those sure. seeds are whatever yeah. um but yeah so 40th anniversary so that's kind of cool huh. was the first apple was it a granny smith apple right? <laughs> because if it's not Matt, you're not going to be I'm there not gonna you're going to care yeah. more, if it's more importantly right. is it mealy <laughs> <laughs> If it's Granny Smith Fest, I'll be there, but uh, I don't that know works. about Pippin's. But no, this is interesting. So Pippin is the type of apple, and it was brought over um, with the early settlers. Yep. And they went straight to Fairfield? Well, Fairfield was named for Fairfield, England. Yeah. So as kind of like a nod, Dave, I think his name is Dave, yeah, David Thomas, the then owner. Wendy's. Right. Of um, <laughs> the, the Fairfield Inn thought, oh, well, let's do something to kind of, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Come yeah. On. So, right. <laughs> now I get that oh, one. <laughs> okay. No, that's all. That's all. But no, Dave Thomas what? Oh, well, I was saying as you were still making fun. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nod to the roots of the town being named after Fairfield, England, and the colonists bringing over this particular apple. Got it. plant. Yeah, so. They didn't bring it here, per se. Uh, no, I mean, just here is in the greater the The, the colonies, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> okay. But they didn't like, we must find Fairfield, PA, that hasn't right. been named yet, and plant a <laughs> pippin tree. I get it. Yeah. So okay. it's a festival. What do you want, man? Nah, yeah, good. All right. So that's really all the news. I mean, there's technically, I'm going to, it's, it Oh, that's, the that's news, the, that was the I'm weekend gonna... part two? No. Oh, good. You have. That was just See, the news, you told man. me just the news. Now, this oh, weekend, where the action is. Don't worry, I'll bring the shock collar next week. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, please, yeah. yeah. I meant to bring, uh, bring that up. I keep forgetting to bring it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring it. Shock collar. Yeah, yeah I say he, I'm an odd too Anytime much. he tries to, like, ignore my lights on the walls, oh. I'm just going to blast him. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it is? I'm not ignoring them on purpose. They're, I'm, I'm starting to not notice them now. <laughs> Even this one, look, I got one right here, Eric. Right. I know. I still... <laughs> It's right in your face. But also, I went over with Pete because he's he's a celebrity guest. Like, it's not just, it's not Cam, know. you know? I, I mean, didn't no try offense, to cut Cam. that. Oh. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> so, um, the big happenings in town this weekend, of course, the we talked about this last time, the annual fall outdoor antique show on pretty much all the downtown streets of Gettysburg. Mm. That's this Saturday from 7 a.m. to 4. Um, if you make it downtown, don't forget about the farmer's market that's still running 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. You can just walk right over yep, and, and, yep. and patronize those folks. Don't forget, um, ladies and gentlemen, you can park there and walk around town. And yeah. the antique festival is this weekend. You're going to need to park somewhere. That's right. That's what park, Rosa said. Yeah, park we there. We have it right from the director. Do so. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's that's the big stuff on Saturday. Uh, on Sunday, just a reminder that our friend, friend of the show, Rob Abbott, licensed battlefield guide, is going to be doing a presentation from two to 5 p.m. a walking tour regarding the confederate artillery leadership i'm glad you brought this up uh so monday the ask a guide with rob came out and the whole show we kept saying 
September 22nd. September 22nd. Yeah, that was a Tuesday night. <laughs> Rob changed, kept saying Yeah, it, they changed right? to Sundays. <laughs> but by the end, no. the host with the most realized that didn't make sense. No. And so I called him on it. I said, hey, <laughs> you sure it's the 22nd, not the 26th? And then we looked at the calendar and he goes, oh, it's the 26th. 26. So if you listen all the way to the end, you get the right date. And in the show notes, it has the right date and there's a link to register. So it should all tell you the 26th. Yeah. But in case you didn't listen all the way and you go, oh, well, the 22nd is just, you know, whatever. Tuesday, yeah. yeah. I think the issue was the summer licensed Battlefield Guide Association walking tours were Tuesday nights from five to eight. Yeah. The fall season kind of officially started here sometime in September, and they switched over to Sunday afternoon mm-hmm. programming from two to five. So that's, yeah. I think, when he did the recording with you, he was probably still in the mindset of summer yes. season and just assumed it was that Tuesday. Right. But it is this. But we Sunday did catch it by the end. That. Is my yep. point. So Good. I'm glad you said. And then also, people, uh, this was Rob's first time on the show, and people awesome. loved him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one guy on uh, the YouTube version of the show, he uh, he commented something like. Uh, a new weapon in the AG arsenal, Rob oh, Abbott, or something ooh, like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Rob's good. And then I've heard from people in uh, emails and stuff that they were like, Rob, what, Eric? Oh, I thought you were saying something. No, I was just concurring. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Carry on. Go ahead. Um, I, so are we going to announce, we're probably not going to do a show next next week. So I Next just... week, we're not going to do a show because Veronica has that uh, <laughs> day-long yeah. pic- photograph thing God. that she's going to do. So yeah. just a reminder that these um, Sunday Battlefield walks continue. It's not just next, it's not just Right, what's from next now. weekend? It's, um, I don't know. <laughs> There's another one <laughs> next on, weekend. There is another one uh, <laughs> yeah. next weekend. Go on the website, oh, Gettysburg, exactly. gettysburgtourguides.org yeah. for the Association of Licensed Battlefield Guides. But just a reminder, those are all you know Sunday afternoons now. Um, and then finally, just coming up, since we're not going to be here next weekend, just a real quick reminder that the National Apple Harvest Festival yes. is the first two weekends in October. Um, there is a charge for admission. It's $10 for adults, $9 for seniors. Children are free. But... Uh, Saturday and Sunday, both weekends, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., located in Arnsville, which, if you're not familiar, it's just about 10 miles northwest of Gettysburg, um, so it's definitely drivable. And all kinds of crafts and food and entertainment, et cetera, you can look up appleharvest.com for more specific information. How about apple bobbing? Or oh, is COVID, yeah. maybe COVID, uh, uh, apple bobbing. That's I'm horrible. Sure. Yeah. That's terrible. Well, I hear that what they're doing now is they're actually putting the apples in bleach so that <laughs> if you have COVID, <laughs> it'll so, just yeah. kill it, it all right away. Stuff. And then, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Good yeah. thinking. It's yeah. not very good for the eyes, but whatever. <laughs> we got we to gotta keep up uh, appearances of normalcy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so so I'm going to try to end. Uh, this is going to be my goal. Okay. From now on, to try to end on a high note. <sighs> Right? If it's ever have, possible. I, yeah, I mean, we have some good stuff going on. Some good people in the area, some good things, like that kind of stuff. So I'd like to True. highlight those folks. But before I do that, this kind of was tangential. Just a quick reminder that if you want to be a good person yourself, <laughs> the Bag the Bounty uh, collection for non-perishable and personal hygiene uh, items is still running through October 29th. Um, drop, drop off locations include all the Adams County National Br- Branches, local library branches, the YWCA, United Way, Kenny's, Ragged Edge, Gettysburg Times office. So that's one reminder. And then Pete, um, there's a sophomore at your, at your college that actually turned a project, a business project mm. that she had her freshman mm. year into an actual tangible um, something to help the, the Ronald so, McDonald House. Actually, oh, she's awesome. collecting pop tabs at a drop box at the uh, outside of Mr. G's. Yeah, fantastic. So it's kind of neat. Yeah, that's really. Yeah. If she went above and beyond, we, we talked about this a couple weeks ago yeah. when the article came out. It was a business class related, yeah. you know, hypothetical project, yeah. and she, she over did. the summer. That's great. Took, you know, actually took the service to do learning it. at Gettysburg College is a big deal. I'm That's serious. Awesome. They, yeah. Again, I'm always inspired by what these kids do. They have a real commitment to uh, improving the world around them, and particularly this community. So it's well, great. Except I for when they're been... walking down my street at two in the morning, <laughs> drunk as skunks and screaming outside my window. But yes, I'm sure they want to make well, the world a better place. They've contributed <laughs> to the economic welfare yeah. of the community. Oh, yeah. Blow off okay. A okay. Bit of okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, okay. So this is this is the the thing I would like to end on uh, news wise, and I think this is actually you know this little boy is a fifth grader his name is henry russell now get this guys right fifth grade student he actually borrowed a book from the library which is pretty darn cool in and of itself the book was not like you know i don't know green eggs and ham it it was a book about malaria right he read like in this book how malaria affects kids in third world countries and you know outside of our our country 
And he decided to do something. And this Saturday, he, he is making homemade baked goods so that he will sell them right outside the little parklet outside the pub. Mm -hmm. So right on the square, yeah. there's a little brown parklet. He is going to be selling chocolate chip cookies, cheesecake swirl brownies, pumpkin cookies, and classic mm. cupcakes. Mm. And he is raising money for an, inst uh, an organization called Nothing But Nets. And the charity Clever. actually buys nets, bet, like bedding, bedding nets, yeah. for, nets for kids. Yeah, yeah, mosquito nets, le okay. le legitimately. Um, Henry, actually, when he read the book, he was so moved by the fact that every two minutes a child dies from malaria yeah. that he wanted to do this, talked his parents into, you know, I'm, ass I'm assuming they bought the goods for him so that he can bake this stuff. And he's going to donate all the proceeds to uh, nothing but nets. So there's a fifth, <laughs> fifth grader right yeah. in our community, which nice. is actually pretty darn cool. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So stop by and support Henry from noon to four or until he sells out. So get there at noon mm -hmm. and support the young man. I mean, he's just like, I don't know. I don't think this picture is going to do him justice. He's a cutie. He's like a little tiny cutie. Aww. And the fact that he put all this stuff together on his own, like took a library book out, right? Which yeah. is awesome. That makes me happy. Right. Read it, <laughs> made some Reddit, connections, that's the big part, yeah. and then thought, well, that sucks, but what can I do to help? Sure. And this is pretty, pretty inspiring. Doesn't so that's it make my, you feel like yeah. a useless piece of shit? A little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Wow. But good, good for, for Henry, him. man. Yeah. Good for him. Hope he sells out in a hurry. Well, that is a high note. That's a, a yeah. good thing to end it on, There's and no uh, I think that's uh, <laughs> that's a good way to end the show there. There is no okay. time. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you only have a blue light. We I have told you there is no time for that. Hang on. Uh, there is no time. <laughs> That's officially There, dead. I fixed it. Isn't the blue light? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, no, you, you want to end a little earlier uh, before, you know. <laughs> uh, Pete, thank you very much for doing this. This yeah, is a lot of fun. This is yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. It was great. I had a wonderful time. It, yeah. it was either here or... Friday yoga back at Gettysburg College, <laughs> right? And so it was a Who tough wants? choice, but I'm glad I came here. Yeah, well, I mean, at least we beat out yoga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think we could beat out goat yoga. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've heard yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. There's, uh, that's, that's really that looks... what I'm doing next week, and that's why I can't be here, but <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I thought it was a goat yoga weekend for you. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't forget to sign up October 8th, 9th. Uh, Civil War Institute there and go get Pete's book. Yep. That's it. Thank you all. Thanks. See you later. Give me on the name. Augerspin Protestant. There were many union men who wept with joyful tears. When they saw the other flag, they had not seen for years. Hardly could they be restrained from breaking forth in cheers while we were marching through Georgia. Wow. Hurrah, we bring to the Jubilee. Hurrah, hurrah, the flag that makes you free. So we sang the chorus from Atlanta to the sea while we were marching through Georgia. Hurrah, 